Welcome back to my channel everyone. Thank you for tuning into this video and I'm basically going to explain how to get faster executions when trading on TD Ameritrade's Thinkorswim. I'm going to go over a couple tips and tricks that you could use to tweak Thinkorswim so it becomes a little faster and basically it gives you a little bit of a shortcut when you were looking to buy or sell. And as you all know, every second matters in trading. You know, if you're looking to buy, but the platform is lagging uh, and you don't get in when you originally intended to get in, then obviously you're going to have a much worse fill price. Uh, you might not even be able to get into the trade. So this is just going to be a little faster for executions, going to help you get better fills. Um, and this is personally what I do use when I'm executing my trades, buy or sell. Um, now, I did make a video on this a little less than a year ago, and it has to do with Active Trader on Thinkorswim. You know, whether you're buying options, buying stocks, um, buying future contracts, Active Trader is the way to go execution wise, and I'm going to explain why. Before we do get into Active Trader, if you learn anything from this video, it would be greatly appreciated if you subscribe to my channel. And also, I'm going to link my Instagram in the description below. I do daily trade recaps and I also post very good tips and tricks about the market. So, as you all know, I day trade options and Active Trader works very well with that. But if you trade stocks, futures, I also will use Active Trader for executions. Now, the first thing on the chart that I want to show you is for active trader for execution wise, I go up here to the top and I add another cell and I dedicate this solely to active trader. So you could have two charts, but I remove a chart and then click active trader to add the basically the active trader. And later on in this video, I'm going to explain that a little more in detail. Um, but now we have an active trader and now we have a chart. So what I do is, is I link the active trader to number two. Now this is going to be separate from the chart on the left. And for all you option traders that know this is you have to go to the trade tab and you know go back and forth between trade and charts to basically click the order that you're looking to or the contract you're looking to purchase. So with Active Trader, since I have it linked to number two, all you have to do is go to the contract you're looking to purchase, either go to the bottom and hit send to and then obviously send it to the yellow because we have that linked or you can click copy and then go back to your charts and then on your keyboard hit control and V and that's basically going to paste the option contracts into the active trader. So if you see my last video on order types, you know, I only will limit order into my options trades just because of liquidity purposes, just because I want to be a passive buyer or seller and basically not hit the market where I remove liquidity. So for trading options, I only will limit order in and that's what active trader is basically perfect for. Now you could market order in to buy and market order to sell on active trader. But personally, if I'm not trying to be aggressive, I do not use market. And I basically use this price ladder here to enter and exit my trades. Now, really fast, a brief introduction to this. You have the bid and you have the ask. The bid are all your passive buyers and the ask is all your passive sellers. So when we're looking to long an option contract, whether it be a call or a put, you're looking to put an order on the bid and you're basically waiting for the market to hit your, your limit for your contract or for your position to get filled. So in this case, we have the 335 calls in here and I have the level two up on my active trader just to illustrate this point but we have the bid which is $15 and we have the ask which is $16.10 visually you're going to be able to see that on the price ladder on the depth of market on the active trader because the first number is the inside ask which is at 1610 and that matches up what's on the level two and then our inside bid which is the first number on the bid side is at $15 and that matches up with our level two. So think about everything in between $15 and $16.10 is basically slippage. If we were to market order in, it's safe to say we would get in around the 1610 mark. If we were to now want to sell that position five seconds, 10 seconds later, for us to sell, we basically have to, you know, if you want to get out fast, we're gonna to have to market order. And basically we're going to get filled at the $15 mark all the way down there. So right off the bat, we're down about a dollar and 10 cents off of slippage. If you use active trader and you become a passive buyer and a passive seller, you can basically let the market come to you and get filled at a price that you're comfortable paying. And that's the beauty of active trader. Now up here, you could easily fast uh, change your quantity. You know, if you wanted to buy 200 contracts, all you got to do is click 200. You know, you want to buy one contract, just edit the quantity and hit one. 
Now, what's important here is that you click auto send and make sure it's checked. The whole point of this video is for faster executions. If auto send is not checked, what that's going to do is, is if you click to buy at a certain price, that's going to come up with a separate pop-up screen and basically give you an order confirmation. And now you're going to have to click the mouse a couple extra times before your order actually gets sent to the market. And obviously that's going to take up a little more time. That's going to waste a couple of seconds if you're not fast with it. And that's going to screw up the whole point, which is faster executions. So if you hit auto send, you have to be careful as well, because if you do put a, a, a limit on the market, you know, it's sitting there and then it's very easy for us to get filled if we're not careful because there's going to be no confirmation and we just have to be careful clicking buttons on this because we could get filled if we don't, you know, want to get filled and we accidentally click something, um, not on purpose. So now we're on demand just to illustrate how the actual process works between buying and selling. And we're just talking about a hypothetical situation right now with Netflix out of supply. We're looking to play puts. If we did not use active trader, what we have to do is go to the trade tab, click our puts, you know, edit the price, edit our quantity. And you know, if we want to cancel the order, it's going to be tough to do fast. So it's just a big mess doing it this way. That's why the active trader way is much better. So all you have to do is find the contracts you're looking to play. In this case, I'm just looking at random contracts, just, you know, obviously a hypothetical situation. So now I have them pasted in the active trader. I'm going to play this and show you exactly what I would do if the market is actually in real time. The time I'm recording this video is closed, so I cannot do this. Um, but we have the bid and the ask, like I just explained. The inside bid's at 22 cents. The inside ask is at 26 cents. So about a four cent spread. In this case, with tight spreads, you know, let's just say I want to play 50 contracts, edit the quantity, and in this case, it's 24 by 27. I'm probably going to put an order at 26 cents. And then boom, now I'm filled at 26 cents. I have 50 contracts, and you're going to see the entry price, whatever's highlighted. That is where you got in. If you notice, I put my order on the bid because I'm a buyer. I'm looking to buy. A tip, which I don't recommend, but I know a lot of people would like do this is if you click this little settings arrow up here you can customize your active trader and if you want to see your PL, you could click PL open hit add item and hit okay now on the side you're going to be able to see your PL, but up here where my cursor is at is never ever going to populate if you're trading options if you're trading stocks or futures that will populate but the only true way to see your PL trading options on active trader is through this way where you're going to see the open on the right now I'm long at 26 cents. Uh, I'm going to fast forward this, I don't know, by 30 minutes or so. And now let's say I want to get out of my contracts. Remember, when you're buying, you're buying on the bid because we're a passive buyer. When you're selling, you're a passive seller. Uh, if you want to limit, if you want to market, you're an aggressive seller. But in this case, like I said, I only limit when I'm buying and selling. And we have to just wait for this to load a little bit. And now it's going to order, uh, populate. Now the ask is at 18 cents by 15 cents. So if I were to get out of this trade, I'm down about 500 bucks right now. All I have to do to get out is put my limit somewhere between the bid and the ask. If the spreads are tight and the slippage is wide, the difference between the bid and the ask, then put your order at the mid price, put your order a little bit above the mid price. It all depends on how aggressive you want to be. It all depends on how fast you want to get in, how fast you want to get out. And it all depends on the volatility of the stock. So it's a lot of different factors that are going to influence the premiums and a lot of different factors that are going to affect your trading decisions. That, that's why you know nothing is ever set in stone. The market is constantly evolving. It's constantly changing. And the only way for you to be profitable is if you are like that as well constantly changing, constantly evolving, and, you know, not trading like a stone where everything is just, you know, the same as it was yesterday. Um, so if I want to get rid of this trade, you know, I'm probably going to sell at the last traded price and boom, now my contract's closed out. I sold all my contracts, uh, and my net position is zero right where my cursor is, is where you're going to be able to see your net position. See, I just got back in 50 contracts. Look at my net position. It went up by 50 close out the trade. Let's see. I'm just going to sell market. Now my net position is zero. 
So that's going to be able to see how many contracts you actually bought. And that's just the process of buying and selling using Active Trader. Now let's get into the tips to help this program run a little faster and smoother. Now, the first point I would like to make, which in my opinion is very important, is that I open up a separate Thinkorswim application solely dedicated for executions. What I mean by this is that I have another program that runs in the background um, for my charts, and I also have another program uh, that runs in the background for charts only, and then I have a third Thinkorswim, which I open up solely for executions and basically running my active trader just to ensure me that there's not going to be as much lag as I'd like because I'm running, you know, eight charts or 12 charts. So this is solely dedicated for my active trader. And in fact, I don't, I don't even put a chart on there and I just have active trader. Now to get active trader on your screen is you have to go to a chart. I'm just going to maximize this chart just to illustrate this example. Maximize uh, to, to get active trader is on to be on the right sidebar. You have all these different little options. Just hit active trader and that's going to bring your active trader on the screen. And you could also even forget about it and just get rid of the chart just to have active trader. And now let's get into the second point that I want to make, which is to go to setup in the top right, go to application settings. Now this is also very important. Go to system and make sure your quote speed is on real time with no delay. I know some people that message me and they say that, you know, sometimes their program lags, um, whether it be quote speed or whether it just be user interface speed, but for quote speed, make sure you are on real time with no delay. If you go to slow or moderate, whatever the case may be, your quotes are going to be delayed and they're not going to be in real time. For example, if the stock is currently trading at $300, maybe five seconds later, the stock is at $301, but because your quote speed is delayed, you're not going to see that in real time. So just make sure this is on no delay. And then the next tab, go to active trader and then make sure the AT order submission rate limit is on zero milliseconds. Just make sure that's on zero. I'm pretty sure standard, it goes to 500, um, but just make sure this is on zero. That way your submission rate is only going to be at zero milliseconds. Hit apply settings and now you should be good to go on that end. Another thing I want to point out is that if you go to the help tab and you go to system, you're going to basically see all your memory in Thinkorswim. So if your program does lag and it's having a hard time running, whether it be a your computer, a RAM issue, or re whether it just be too much memory and your quotes being received, um, what I do and what I was recommended to do is to click collect garbage a couple of times. And basically that's going to collect unnecessary amounts of quotes that you've received, your data received. And that's basically just going to filter a bunch of garbage you have and free up a little memory. It's not going to make a huge difference. And like I said, I'm not a huge computer guy, but this definitely helps if my program is running slow or giving me a couple issues. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something. If you did drop a like, subscribe to my channel and also follow my Instagram. Thank you.